Let's discuss a concept called malware. Mal comes from the Latin for evil or bad or dangerous. Malware is evil or bad or dangerous software. That's a very broad term. Now, there are several different variations on this theme. One that you probably heard about a thousand times or more is the term virus. There are other lesser known terms you'll become familiar with them as a software developer called the Trojan horse and a worm. These are actually different things and yet, at the end of the day, they are all computer programs, just like you're going to develop. But it's the intent behind the computer program that matters here. These are computer programs designed to do something that's actually not very nice. So let's examine them in a little bit more detail. A virus is a computer program that is designed to alter the way the computer works. And what computer? The one the program gets installed on. So you might hear the term, my computer has a virus. Well, if that's factually true, and if the computer program fits in the category of virus, what that means is somehow that computer program got installed on the computer just like any other computer program, like a word processing program or a computer game, but this program alters the way the computer works. Examples could be that it erases the storage of your computer, just utterly wipes out everything on your hard drive. Some examples could be it could search through all the files that are in your computer and try to find credit card data. Others could be that it just simply displays pictures on the screen randomly. Anything a computer program can do, this can do because it's a computer program. But it's designed to alter the operation of your computer without you knowing and usually to bad effect. That's a virus. Small computer program alters the way your computer operates. There are a couple of characteristics of a computer program that's called a virus. One is that it activates itself. It can actually be programmed in such a way that when it gets installed on your computer, it starts up automatically. Compare that to, say, a computer game on your, pro on your computer like Solitaire. Solitaire isn't running unless you tell it to run. You find it, click on it, it starts. Now, your computer is engaged in the process of running the Solitaire program. Not so with the virus. Once it's installed on your computer, it starts itself automatically and does whatever alteration it's been programmed to do. Another characteristic of a virus as a computer program, it replicates itself. And this is where its effects get truly dangerous. Part of what a computer virus can do once it gets installed and again automatically starts is make copies of itself and put them elsewhere on your computer or put them onto a storage device that you might be using that's attached to the computer. And now that storage device, if you use it on a second computer, can put that virus, that computer program, on that second computer and so on and so on. And the virus can spread in much the same way the disease virus can spread. But it's a digital computer program that spreads. Now let's discuss a Trojan horse. As background, the Trojan horse is a famous item from history. Thousands of years ago, two countries were fighting. One was Greece, and one was Troy. The Greek soldiers had been attacking Troy for years. But Troy, a very heavily fortified city, had resisted the attacks of the Greeks. Finally, in an effort to trick the Trojan soldiers, the Greeks pretended to retreat. Let's take all of our soldiers and ships and go away. But they didn't really go away. They went a little bit away and they were hiding. They left something behind. And what they left behind was Here's Eric's wonderful artistic ability. A large wooden horse. Inside the horse were a group of Greek soldiers. This item stayed outside the city gates of Troy all night long. And when the Trojans awoke in the morning, they found what looked like all of the Greek soldiers finally have been retreated after years of besieging their city. And they went, oh, 
this must be a gift. And they took it and they wheeled it inside the city gates. That night, the soldiers came out and they unlocked the gates and the returning ships and men combined and there was an attack of Troy and Troy got defeated by Greece. That's the historical basis for the term Trojan horse. And you may have heard it used in other contexts in your life. So this brings us to the actual Trojan horse, this considered malware, a computer program with ill intent. What is it? It's something that pretends to be another thing. What it is, in fact, is a dangerous computer program that's going to do something that you're not going to like on your computer. But it comes disguised as something else. Let's say it comes on an email disguised as a simple attachment that says vacation plans or free coupon or click here. So here's your email, subject, body, and the attachment is just a document. Like I said, it's called vacation coupon. And let's say that this looks not suspicious at all. Like it looks like the subject is, here's the coupon you asked for and it's from someone you know, right? And you open that document, but it's not what it says it is. Instead, it's a computer program that goes in and erases your hard drive. Now this file, this Trojan horse, again is malware and it's gonna do something you're not gonna like. Now that can be a variety of things. It might do something as simple as erase your hard drive or just pop up a bunch of pictures of narwhals on your screen. But probably it's gonna do something a lot more damaging, like search through your computer for any examples of credit card data it can find, open up a connection to the internet, and send that credit card data off to who knows who. Well, probably the creators of the Trojan horse, where they can use your credit card. So, difference between a virus and a Trojan horse. A virus, you're not even gonna see it coming. It gets installed and you don't know it's installed and as soon as it's installed it starts running and it does something damaging. The Trojan horse, you activate. It comes acting as if it's something else. Again, maybe a simple attachment to an email and then you activate it and then it does what it is intended to do. But it's ill intent. Now let's cover a category of malware called a worm. Now a worm is very similar to a virus. In fact, it's considered a subclass of a virus. Here's a bit of the difference. It has to do with how this virus gets activated, gets installed on your computer and does what it does. It requires some human interaction for this to occur. Either you take a memory storage device like a flash drive that you're not really that familiar with and someone just gave you and you stick it into your computer. You just put that virus into your computer. A worm on the other hand does not require human interaction in order to replicate itself onto another computer. Instead, it uses already existing connections to your computer. Remember, your computer is almost always connected to some other computer via the internet. Remember, you have your PC. We've looked at this a bunch of times before. You've got your browser, this piece of software, but this PC is connected out over the internet using internet protocol to lots and lots and lots of other computers. And many times, there's software running on your computer that keeps a lot of these connections open and you may not even know about it. And if someone out in the world is able to access one of these connections and connect down to your computer, they can actually install the worm, the malicious software, onto your computer without you having to do anything. And from there, the worm could use that outbound connection to find other computers and replicate itself on there. Now, what's it gonna do once it's installed in your computer? Again, sky's the limit. Whatever a computer program can do. But the essential difference is the virus does require some action on your part, whether you know you've done it or not, to actually get that thing installed onto your computer. Once it's installed, it just executes and does whatever malware function is gonna do. The worm, on the other hand, you don't even know it's coming. You didn't do anything. It found a connection into your computer and it installed itself. So what do you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is use a specific type of computer program called an antivirus software or antivirus program on your computer. These are specific pieces of software that are continually updated to be able to know the structure of 
different viruses, Trojan horses, worms, and other malware that exists out in the world. And part of what this computer program does is on a regular basis, scan through your computer looking for any files that actually match any of their known examples or definitions of these types of malware and then delete them from your computer. Now, it's a bit more complex than that because obviously we're talking about highly sophisticated software here written by people that have a lot of intelligence and programming ability but should be using their abilities for good, not for evil. So antivirus software is written by some of the most talented software programmers there are in the world. And their job changes every single day because these change every single day. Antivirus software, because of that, continually gets updated with new examples or definitions of the various items of malware that are being found out in the world. This is a constantly evolving industry, if you will. There are also a few common sense things you can do to avoid viruses or Trojan horses from being installed in your computer. One is, if you don't recognize the source of a file that you're being given, then don't open it and put it on your computer. If you don't 100% know where a computer program that you're about to put on your computer comes from and exactly what it's meant to do, check into it first before you actually install it on your computer. Some of this is, is common sense.